What's going on everybody? C4 here and welcome to the newest episode of the Realistic Rebuilds. You guys voted on Twitter. It came down to the Buffalo Bills or doing the 49ers for a second time. However, this time with Jimmy Garoppolo because we did the Niners real early on. Their roster is almost completely different. Well, I mean not completely, but there's some big, big changes which make the Niners definitely a team that's worthwhile of doing right now. Uh, last year in Madden 17, we pretty much would revisit teams that we failed to do. But I think with the Jimmy Garoppolo thing, that swings the Niners rebuild back into contention just to do another one outright. The first time we did a Niners rebuild, it was good. We won the Super Bowl. We only made the playoffs once, but we went all the way. We had Josh Rosen, who was an incredible QB. We got Paris Campbell, Josie Jewell for our rookies, Mark Walton, uh, Mac Wilson, Nikhil Harry. I think for free agents, we had Sua Cravens, Marcus Williams... Uh, I'm looking through it. I, write, I usually write them down when we get them here, just so I don't want to overdo it. Uh, that's it, though. We pretty much. Oh, we had Josh Doxson. We had DeAndre Hopkins. Shout out to DeAndre Hopkins. So we did sign some big names there. But, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo. It's the Jimmy G era. So uh, taking a quick look now at the roster, plenty of changes have happened. Also, I'm not going to use the same prospects. Someone asked me on Twitter, don't do them again. You know, same players. I'm going to be using completely different players because uh, this team's really different. Uh, so we're going Jimmy G as the starter at the QB spot. He has this, you know, 25, quick dev, 78. I'm really interested. I've never used Jimmy Garoppolo in a Madden, so well, maybe he'll develop nicely. Uh, we have Bethel here who's 23, a rookie, 76 overall. So I decided to throw him up on the trade block and see if anyone wants it. That's a pretty good starting QB. Maybe a Jets or something like that will come calling along because really when you look at first round, like, quarterbacks next year, 76, like, he's probably, he'd probably be, like, the third best QB that you could draft. So, yeah, go for that. Uh, running backs, we got Carlos Hyde, 86. He's the money age for a rebuild at 26. Um, Matt Breida, who was nothing in the first rebuild. He looks pretty serviceable for a backup, 22, 76 overall. Joe Williams is solid. Uh, use check is a good fullback, and he's at good age of 26. Uh, look at wide receivers. We have Pierre Gasson, just a placeholder at wide receiver. Goodwin, Robinson. Uh, Trent Taylor was a really good slot wide receiver for us in the first 49er rebuild. Pretty sure he got 1,000 yards a couple times, so we'll definitely use him. But wide receiver is really our first big position that we definitely want to try to build up a little bit. Uh, tight end George Kittle wasn't this good when we did the first 49er rebuild. 23, 79 overall. Like That's a guy there that should develop into like a mid-high 80s tight end. So that spot's good. Offensive line, oof. You know, thank God it's easy to draft offensive linemen this year's uh, Madden. We need a left tackle. Staley's too old. We need a left guard. We need a center. We need a right guard. Really, the only spot that's good is Trent Brown, who's 81. I think last time we did the rebuild, he was like 78. And we got him to develop into an 85. So we know that right tackle spot is short up. I see that Florida Gators. Uh, on defense, it's looking soft, man. I think our D-line is good. Uh, Aaron Lynch didn't develop very well, but I knew he was always a guy that got six to eight sacks every season. That is exactly what we need. Uh, right defensive end, we have Tank Carradine. He's 28. He's ahead of Solomon Thomas, who's our superstar dev first-round draft pick. So we threw up Tank Carradine on the trade block. Usually the Patriots like to trade for edge rushers, so maybe we'll be able to get that Jimmy Garoppolo pick back. But Solomon Thomas is going to start superstar dev 78. Uh, D-tackle, we have Buckner, who's a 90. I'm pretty sure the last time we did the Niners rebuild, he was still like in the high, high 70s, low 80s. Now he's up to a 90 stud. We got Eric Armstead, 81. Doesn't develop well at all for some reason. Uh, but, you know, youth is on his side, so we'll see what it can happen there. Uh, so our defensive line is set. Our linebackers, we decided to move Eric Reed to an outside linebacker. I know this was proposed in real life. I don't know if he actually got some snaps at linebacker or not. But I figure, you know, I'm a big fan of the money backer role, like Dion Buchanan, Mark Barron. So we're going to see what Eric Reed can do. Uh, middle linebacker, we have Ruben Foster, 23-81. I mean, middle linebacker is set. Uh, we probably could use another right outside linebacker, Malcolm Smith, Ray Ray Armstrong. They're just placeholders. Uh, in the second area, we have Akilah Witherspoon, 74 overall as a rookie. Uh, the first rebound, I don't think he developed a whole lot, but he didn't get a lot of playing time. Richard Robinson actually was very good for us, but they decided to trade him. I don't know where he went. I think, I'm going to guess Buffalo, maybe. I have no idea, but uh, definitely need corners. We're going to be going all in on corners in the first round here. Secondary in general. Uh, free safety, Jimmy Ward, placeholder. He's not bad, but I'm going to say keep an eye out for Derwin James. I think this might be the rebuild that we see ourselves. A nice Derwin James or Minka Fitzpatrick if we can get them. Uh, strong safety with Jaquiski Tart, 25-84. I mean, he's a monster. I've seen a couple of Niner games. This guy's a big hitter, really good strong safety. So, yeah, that's our that's the base for our Niners rebuild with Jimmy Garoppolo. But we have big shoes to fill. Last time we did the Niners, we won the Super Bowl. So that's pretty much the expectations for this rebuild. Usually we don't have really any expectations at all. So let's repeat it. Let's do the damn thing. Let's show that Garoppolo is as good, if not better, than Josh Rosen would be for the San Francisco 49ers. Let's jump in the rebuild. Let's do it. Right off the bat, we got a first rounder from the Carolina Panthers for Ted Carradine. Thank you very much. Don't know why they're making that move. 
but there's no way in hell we're not not taking that in carry. He is 28. He's still a really good player. 28, 83 overall. Could just still develop into a high 80. Still definitely not worth a first round pick in my opinion. But you know, Panthers, they, they walk to the beat of their own drum. Riverboat Ron gambling on him. So I will definitely take their draft pick. Let's get into the season. All right, the midseason point, it's pretty clear the guys we want to get, we want to keep our young players. So, Carlos Hyde, Aaron Lynch, Jimmy G, and Eric Reed are the big four that I want to keep. Uh, worst case scenario with Jimmy Garoppolo, we might have to franchise tag him, which is kind of what I think the 49ers will do in real life. Uh, kind of have a one-year full, you know, no strings attached kind of deal. Plus, we know Kyle Shane, and he's from that organization of the Redskins that loves it just to give QBs one-year deals. for it saves a lot of money, but those are the big four that I would like to retain, and we're going to try. All right, so here we are at season's end, and I mean, clearly we're not going to make the playoffs. I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo was going to be just that dude. But looking at the year, I mean, uh, okay, 2-14. and 14. That might give us the number. We might have the number one overall pick. Do we just say screw it? We, we have the number one overall pick. Do we just say screw it and go draft Josh Rosen again? Is that what we're going to do? Let's look at the stats here. For Jimmy Garoppolo's first year with the... Oh, those aren't great. 3,300 passing yards, 25 touchdowns, 20 picks. Didn't get sacked. Like, 34 sacks is not terrible. I've seen, I've seen way worse than the times we've done all these rebuilds. 25 and 20? I mean, Garoppolo might not be the answer. This very well may be at some point in this rebuild we give up on Garoppolo. We signed him a three-year deal. Not a whole lot of money. Like, $20 million deal, so it's not bad. It's not breaking the bank. Still have a whole bunch of salary cap, but... Not a, not a hot start there. But maybe once we give him some wide receivers, we'll be all right. Carlos Hyde, great year. We were able to re-sign him as well. 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns. I will take that for sure. As far as receiving is concerned, we got 62 catches, 500 yards and a touchdown from Goodwin. Uh, 834 and 5 from Garcon. George Kittle, good year. 59 catches, 753 yards and 7 touchdowns. Save for Trent Taylor. Both our rookies performed fairly well. 45 catches, 700 yards and 6 TDs for Trent Taylor. Hyde also had 300 yards and 2 touchdowns. Hyde's probably our MVP. Uh, on the season until we see the defense here at least. Uh, look at the defense, Ruben Foster had 123 tackles, Brock Coy 113, Tart 102, and Malcolm Smith 100. See, I know the Niners switched from a 3-4 to a 4-3, but why does that happen? Why Why are those numbers, why do we have two middle linebackers putting up stats like that? I, I can't answer that. Uh, as far as defense, we got eight and a half sacks here for DeForest Buckner, who had 13 tackles for loss. Solomon Thomas with 18 tackles for loss. Six and a half sacks, so our defensive line is looking scary. Eric Reed transitioning from safety to linebacker, 83 tackles, six and a half sacks. I like to see that. Uh, Lynch had five, Malcolm Smith, five and a half, Ruben Foster, two and a half for interceptions, three picks to Quincy Tart, two from Foster. Yeah, secondary. So we need to improve our secondary a uh, big time. Uh, taking a quick look here at the yearly awards, MVP went to Tom Brady. That's the short list there, coach of the year. Went to Anthony Lynn, very surprising. And in the NFC Offensive Player of the Year went to Mr. Drew Brees. Defensive Player went to our boy, Brandon Graham. No love for any Niners there. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Mr. Biscuit, Mitchell Trubisky. George Kittle coming at 7. Trent Taylor at 9. And for Defensive Rookie of the Year, there we go. Ruben Foster, hopefully he gets himself a superstar dev trailer. Look at that. Solomon Thomas at 6. Witherspoon at 7. Tons of Niners. So good start there. Statistically, just our record was absolute fun. So what we're going to do, jump to the offseason. Hopefully... For one, one of these years, we're going to get a good free agent in year one. This may be the year. All right, so quickly looking at free agents. Mike Hilton from the Steelers, 24-81 overall. We're making sure we're going above and beyond the Kansas City Chiefs and Rams. We might not get them, but that would be an excellent pick and one real less hole we have to hit on a draft pick. I will say, you know, I hype it up a lot, but from what my scouting has, I have about literally seven guys across really the first, oh, pretty much all the draft. Two of them are in the seventh round. That I think are going to be absolute monsters. I'm excited to see what they are. But it would be very, very helpful to start off with landing Hilton here in free agency. Alright, so getting a quick look at our draft recap. Feeling great. Feeling fine. First round, we had this safety. We didn't know he had a superstar dev trait, but he looked like a monster. So we made him dirt with James from Florida State. I had it feeling in my plums that it was going to be a really good safety class. Uh, we got two of the three big studs that I wanted. Uh, unfortunately, that was it. Actually, there's probably five guys from the scouting process that look pretty good. Uh, at least we're able to get Derwin James at free safety to pair back there with Jaquiski Tart. Finally, it's time to see Derwin James in a rebuild. Uh, we actually kind of, you know, missed on this pick. 73 overall wide receiver with a slow dev trait. Big-bodied guy from the U, Russ Adams. So we just left him as is. That's nah, going to be perfect every year. Um, again, another one we're just leaving at is uh, Ed Abali, a tackle from Idaho. 
Uh, he was our left tackle. I just moved him to right tackle. But then in the third round, we hit on a right tackle that we made a left tackle. We turned him into Jerron Christian from Louisville. Lamar Jackson's big old left tackle. 79 overall with a superstar dev trade. Very nice. Very, very nice. He was a stud that we wanted from day one. Uh, in the third round, we got Alden Tate, a wide receiver. Didn't attend the combine, so I didn't really scout this guy. I had no idea what was going on. Able to get a 76 overall. Only normal dev trade, but with that size again, that's 6'5", 235. Maybe we might even consider moving a tight end at some point. Uh, we got a 69 wide receiver again, kind of butchering wide receivers here, but he has speed. All right, we got some speed there. Uh, we got a 75 center, 71 uh, D tackle, and a 73 kicker named Turner Smoker. I don't even know where. But overall, really good draft class. We got two big time players, even three, uh, here in Auden Tate that will contribute here in year number two of the rebuild. But Derwin James time. Let's go. All right, so as we get ready for season number two, here's our team. Garoppolo, 81 overall. Didn't have the best of seasons, but not the worst of years. Uh, Hyde still chilling at an 88. We got Gar old man Garcon still need to get that legit wide receiver. Let's actually move Trent Taylor back into the slot. Uh, with Odd and Tate getting the start on the outside. 79 overall, good scheme fit. Kittle's an 82, Brown's an 82. Offensive line still a work in progress. We're going Jaron Christian as our starter. We threw Joe Staley up on the trade block. Hopefully we can get anything. Uh, the random center we didn't modify is our starting center. Offensive line's not great, let's be honest. Um, you know, on the defense, corners still aren't great. Our D-line looks spectacular. Well, it's spectacular in relation to everyone is like under 25. So that is excellent. Uh, Foster's up to an 86, Reed's up to an 81, Tart's an 87, Derwin James 81. So hopefully the strong safety play can make up for the quarterback play. Kind of like how the Philadelphia Eagles work uh, for the last couple of years. Overall, you know, it's still going to be a little bit of a grind. No one said with Jimmy Garoppolo this was going to be a shorter rebuild or an easier rebuild. We still have our work cut out for us. Uh, so hopefully, you know, we can flip Joe Staley for something. We have two first round picks, you have to remind yourselves. So we should be able to have another really nice offseason as I don't really expect this to be too, too competitive here in season two. All right, so at the midseason point, time to do some re-signings. We were able to flip Joe Staley to the Houston Texans for a second and a six rounder. So we're going to jump all over that. And now looking at our in-house signings, Jaquiski Tart, we need him back. Trent Brown, Eric Armstead, all those guys are at the top of our board. The rest of these guys... You know, depth moves, probably could look at resigning them if we want to in free agency. Then again, we weren't able to get Hilton from um, the Steelers, the 81 overall corner we tried to bid on. So I don't necessarily know um, if Kyle Shanahan's going to get be able to work those free agency signings. Maybe we need to buy that package or something. Uh, but yeah, these big three are crucial for our rebuild. So we'll make sure we're able to retain them. All right, so we're at the end of season number two. Oh, it's not looking. Oh, so look, MVP to Sean Watson. He's a monster. From the Denver Broncos rebuild roulette. If you didn't check that out earlier in the week, go do so. It's a new rebuild series. So, yeah, Garoppolo's, I guess he's minus one. I thought he was in 81 to start the year. Uh, we got some decent XP offensive line. Oh, I don't know. It's not looking not looking too sexy. Six and six and ten. That's not that bad, to be completely honest with you. I, I will take a six and ten. Look at a Garoppolo. That's also not that. I mean, a lot of interceptions, but 4,500 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, 22 picks. Getting sacked 63 times is completely unacceptable. Uh, then again, we are still very much a work in progress on the offensive line. Uh, Carlos Hyde had 844 yards, 9 touchdowns rushing. Uh, Charge receiving. Trent Taylor is a freak of nature. 92 catches, 1,200 yards, 9 touchdowns. Whew, he's got to be a, uh, he's gonna be a stud. Auden Tate, the rookie, 75 catches, 583 and 5. 1,000 yards and 4 touchdowns for Gasson. 7 7. Oh my, almost 1,000 yards receiving from Carlos Hyde. And four touchdowns. That's that's very, very good. Uh, Kittle had a down year. Uh, Goodwin, pretty respectable year. Who was the liability? Oh, my God. 36 sacks given up by the rookie Christian. He does have superstar dev traits, so he probably still got decent XP. I mean, he can't regress too, too bad, I don't think. Uh, 36 sacks is right up there with the all-time worst we've seen. Oh, that's brutal. Uh, defense, Malcolm Smith, 140 tackles, 137 for Ruben Foster, 114 for Jaquiski Tart. We got 12 sacks from Aaron Lynch, 8 from Thomas, 7.5 from Armstead, 6.5 from Mr. Buckner. And on the interception front, Jaquiski Tart had two picks. Ooh, that's not, what did our first round pick do? Not a whole lot. Derwin James, 73 tackles, a tackle for loss, three pass deflections. That's not a, that's not a hot year from him, but hopefully with the superstar dev trait, you can kind of compensate for the lack of stats. Take a quickly look 
at the MVP, it went to Deshaun Watson. I don't think there's any chance in hell we're going to have anyone in any of these awards. Uh, offensive Player of the Year went to Aaron Rodgers. We have no one. Defensive Player of the Year went to Aaron Donald. We have no one. Offensive Rookie. Hey, Auden Tate coming in at number six. And for Defensive Rookie, we got Derwin James at five. Still pretty solid. He's up to an 81. Uh, but overall, not the kind of... I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo showed a little bit of fire here, a little bit. Six and ten's not too bad, but this is going to be our big offseason here uh, as we do have two first-round picks. Looking at our team, I mean, offensive line's a big one. If we can find a couple decent guys. Right now, looking at our team, we have right tackle. We have center, maybe. We don't know. I mean, that, those are a godly amount of tackle, sacks given up from Christian. Maybe we actually move Trent Brown to left tackle and Christian to right tackle. That might be the fresh start he needs. Plus, he might actually get an overall boost. Look, he does. 79. So, actually, we might, I might flip those guys right away. Uh, but, yeah, offensive line interior for sure. We can look for a right outside linebacker and cornerbacks. But there's not a whole lot of pieces. We're close here with the Niners. Let's jump into the offseason. All right, so here's our draft class from year number two. That two first-round picks. Very good draft. We kind of did a little bit of O-line cheers near the end. But, again, I really just want to build up our depth. I think that just helps. I feel like because we don't have injuries on, so we don't have to worry about injuries. But I feel like the better your grade is overall, uh, the better Madden helps you in the sim. But anyways, in the first round, we got a corner here. It was an 81 overall with a quick dev, not superstar, but a very, very satisfying uh, instant starter. So we made him Denzel Ward from Ohio State. Uh, you know, no one really knows if he's going to declare for the 2018 draft or the 2019 draft. So here we're going with positive thinking that he would wait to 2019. Uh, then with our second first round pick, oh, we got A.J. Brown. 77 overall wide receiver. Superstar dev trade from Ole Miss. Got to start building up. Pierre Garçon's not going to be there forever. We have Auden Tate, A.J. Brown on the outside. Two big guys. Two guys over 225. And then we'll hopefully have Trent Taylor in the slot. That's a really solid wide receiver core going uh, in the future. Uh, then we have in the second round, we got Ben Powers, the guard from Oklahoma. He's an 80 overall, but I guess he already has a confidence hit, so he's down to a 78, but a really talented offensive lineman on a very good Oklahoma offensive line, protecting for Baker Mayfield and just a string of good running backs over the last couple seasons. Uh, then we just didn't modify. We get a 78 tackle here in the third round. Could be good trade bait at some point. Slow dev trade, though. Uh, 76 right guard, 72 corner, 72 linebacker, 71 and 72 guard. So maybe we'll, best case scenario, save some money on free agency offensive linemen, so that's all right to go. But it's all a draft class. So let's pop into year number three, and hopefully we can improve upon our 6-10 and 10 record with Jimmy Garoppolo at the helm. So as we get ready for season number three, we're looking better. We're trending in the right direction. We got Garoppolo, who's back to an 81. You know, if we can get him to maybe mid-80s, 84, 85 by the end of the season, we could have some serious damage here. Be better than 6-10 and 10 and be ready for year 4. This is always going to be a year 4, year 5 rebuild here with the Niners. Hides up to an 89. I don't even think he hit 89 uh, in the very first rebuild, so that's good to see. We're going. We're, at, we're benching Garcon to go with Auden Tate, A.J. Brown, and Trent Taylor as receivers. These are the young guys that we want to build up around Garoppolo, so they need to get XP. They're not going to get that sitting behind a 39-year-old Garcon. Uh, offensive line, we switched Trent Brown to uh, from right tackle to left tackle where he goes up to an 84. We switched Christian from a left tackle where he was an 80 to the right tackle spot where he's an 82 after giving up a godly amount of sacks last season. Uh, Kyle, the random, look at these two Randys starting on our offensive line, which is good to see. Ben Powers will start at left guard at 79. So we have our young offensive line. Uh, now it's just, you know, it's going to take time to let these seeds grow. On the defensive side, our front four is good. Lynch, 83. Armstead, 82. Buckter's up to a 94. And Solomon Thomas, 82. Denzel Ward, our first-round draft pick, will start. We got Trey Waynes in free agency. Cheap, uh, plus a Witherspoon here. But still, our secondary is a work in progress. Tart's up to an 87. Derwin James at an 85. Foster's an 88. Reed's serviceable at 82. So still, really, we need like a right outside linebacker, a corner two, and one of these wide receivers to start getting up into the 80s and i think i think we can make a serious push here so i have no idea i have no expectations for you number three i just want to be competitive i want to build this team so that you know year four year five we're going to be a legit contender and have a chance to win the super bowl all right so here we are at the mid-season point and you know this is this is a pretty good free agency period in terms of in-house signings even though we haven't hit on very many free agents i don't think we've had one signing yet but year three going to the year three to year four period in free agency that's usually the first big boom period and we really only have to worry about locking up one guy unfortunately it's 94 overall to forest buckner and he's gonna want over a hundred million dollars 
So this is a tough one because in terms of stats, we're not getting huge numbers from Buckner. He's a guy that's getting us like five, six sacks. But I feel like, you know, he's one of those dudes that's making everyone else better. He's the reason why Aaron Lynch is getting the sacks that he is. So uh, we're not going to overpay. This is this is the max. If he wants more money, he can go to free agency. He can shove it. But, you know, obviously you just can't let 94, 95 overall players, especially when they're 25, walk. All right, so at the end of year number three, as you can tell, no playoff push in sight. We just want to see progress. And, uh, we, you know, there's not a whole lot of XP here. Chad Taylor up to an 80. All right, we'll see what's going on. Six and ten. So nice, juicy, back-to-back -back six and ten seasons for the Niners. So, uh, yeah, how do we buck that trend? We got to figure that out. Jimmy Garoppolo, 4,500 passing errors, 34 touchdowns, 21 picks. Sacked 53 times. So we've... You know, by pretty much essentially switching our left and right tackle, we cut down on 10 sacks. So we're going in the right direction there. Interceptions are still a little high for Mr. Jimmy G. But the 34 touchdowns in the yards are looking nice. Uh, running the ball, 900 yards, 9 touchdowns from Hyde. So once again, didn't break 1,000. But, uh, all right, Trent Taylor is a monster. There's Okay, there's he is a stud. He's right there with Kevin White right now. For He's even below better than Kevin White because he's a 70. He is the best wide receiver find diamond in the rough that we've had 93 catches 1100 yards seven touchdowns out of the slot kittle had a first finally his first really big year uh aj brown as a rookie 67 catches 500 yards four touchdowns carlos carlos hyde 65 catches 700 yards nine touchdowns carlos hyde's like our second best wide receiver so hyde is even though he hasn't broke a thousand yards rushing he, man, he is what do you call it 18 touchdowns like 14 1500 yards hyde's a monster uh, we got 62 catches, almost 1,000 yards, and 7 touchdowns for Tate. It's a good year. Uh, what happened on the sacks, friends? Ooh. So pretty much whoever plays tack for us is getting torched, but that's not 36. Like I said, it's it's going in the right direction. Uh, quickly on defense, 100. Ooh, look at that. 141 tackles, Foster, 130, Malcolm Smith, 112, Tart, 110, Trey Waynes, 100, DeForest Buckner. Who, the, the $100 million man, DeForest Buckner. That's actually, that's worth $100 million, I would say. 16 tackles for loss, five and a half sacks. We got eight and a half sacks from Solomon Thomas, eight from Aaron Lynch, five from Eric Armstead, as well as 17 tackles for loss. So our two defensive tackles are monsters right now. Uh, as far as interceptions, we got six from Tart, five from rookie Denzel Ward. Let's go. That might be a rookie of the year. Almost 100 tackles. I think he should win defensive rookie of the year with that. Uh, a couple picks there from our linebackers, but that is what I like to see. Getting production like that out of your first round draft pick is a thing of beauty. Quickly look at the yearly awards. MVP went to Jacoby Brissett with the Saints. Very, very odd that that's what happened there. Offensive player of the year drove to Jacoby Brissett. Uh, defensive player of the year went to Tack McKinley. Offensive rookie of the year. Did we get any? Hey, AJ Brown coming at number seven. Defensive rookie of the year. There we go. Denzel Ward, I think he had a quick dev trade. Maybe we get that superstar from there. I never know. Last couple of times I haven't been getting uh, that superstar dev trade that we look for when you win uh, Rookie of the Year. But hey, I guess, you know, even though I think the team played better than last year's 6-10, and 10, we had better stats, better development. But, you know, still no playoffs. We're going to be entering year four. You know, we still have the very first 49er rebuild looming overhead where we won the Super Bowl with Josh Rosen and we've yet to make the playoffs here. Uh, but then again, the Josh Rosen rebuild, we didn't do anything till the fifth and final year where we went all the way. So, you know, it's, it's all about perspective. All right, so we are at free agency time. Very interesting free agency. Dak Prescott's available. Keanu Neal. Like, it seems like every year the Falcons just blow up in free agency. But you still got Ngakwe, Leonard Floyd. A bunch of these guys are potentially scheme fits. But I like to keep the core by defense. I tried to test the wires on Kyle Fuller. I think that's Kendall Fuller, actually. Uh, he's fine. But Devondre Campbell, we are paying a lot more than the second place team because we really need him. 88 overall, big upgrade on our starting, starting right outside linebacker. And then James Bradbury, 86 overall. Um, haven't used him at any of the rebuilds, and he would be a great pair with Denzel Ward. Instantly would fix our secondary. Again, we've overbid. If we don't get either one of these free, I'm going to show it in live time because if we don't get either one of these guys, I'm going to be very, very frustrated because we've overpaid for a lot of free agents and have yet to sign a single one. And that, I mean, those are it, man. That's, that's the worst thing, too, because it ca carries your money over. So you can't just bid on, like, four or five corners and expect we're going to get them. So we got Devondre Campbell. We didn't get James Bradbury. What? I, I'll take one of two, I guess. Um, still need a corner. There's Corey Coleman here at wide receiver. That's very interesting. I thought about bidding on him. But that's more so just see if there's any young corners that's... 
Oh my god. Eli Apple, I mean this Jalen Mills, we get the I mean he's 25. Maybe we'll see if we can get Eli Apple in here. He's young. Maybe we can still develop normal. Normal dev traits. It looks like they're going way high on him. God damn it. Alright, let's just go Jalen Mills, see if we can bring in Jalen Mills, see what he can do for us. But that's so frustrating. Alright, so looking at our draft class, three studs once again. Like not too often in year three, we're still using real prospects, but this is this has been really consistent uh, throughout all three seasons that we've had really good drafts, especially in the opening round. So in the first round, we're able to get a corner that was an 81 overall, normal dev trait. So again, have yet to been really getting the high overall with the high dev trait. We've been getting lots of high overalls with the, you know, work in progress dev trades, but we made a Marco Wilson, Quincy Wilson's brother from the University of Florida, one of the best true freshman corners in the SEC. So obviously Gator bias to make it here, but Marco Wilson's a beast. And he's going to be a good NFL player if he stays on the path he's going. Uh, in the second round, we got a linebacker here, 78 overall, normal dev trade. So we made him Dorian Etheridge, the uh, true freshman right now for the Louisville Cardinal. Really, really good playmaker. This guy's a tackle machine. Uh, so pretty much what Lamar Jackson's doing on the offense. Etheridge has been maybe the face of their defense, debatably, uh, especially from the linebacking course. So we have him here to back up Mr. Ruben Foster. And then in the second, second round pick, we got a 78 overall superstar running back. And we decided to make him Cam Akers from Florida State. Very talented playmaker. You know, just because Frank Gore is starting to regress. He's 29, even though Gore's been a machine for us. I think I'd like to have someone in case year five. We have to go to year five and Gore takes a big dip. A guy like K-Maker, superstar dev trade, probably vaulting some uh, touchdowns from the RB2 spot. Uh, you know, they could be at a passing of the guard maybe for you number five. I don't know yet, uh, but K-Makers is very, very, very legit uh, from Florida State. Plenty of good freshman running back that we'll probably still see in the remainder of this year. You still got Najee Harris from Alabama, Jonathan Taylor from Wisconsin, uh, Stephen Carr from USC. But today, we're going with K-Makers. We got a 76 tackle here in the third round, normal dev trade. A couple 70s, a 74 guard here. In the sixth round, so buffing offensive line picks a little bit. But all in all, very good draft class as we look to finally make the playoffs in year number four. Year number four is here, fellas. And this is our team. Incredibly solid. Look at that. No one below a B grade on the offense. Sure, we don't have our superstar, even though Carlos Hyde has kind of been performing like a little Le'Veon Bell numbers. Um, yeah, no superstar. Trent Taylor's an emerging superstar. Basically, he's still only an 81 because we spent all of his XP on a superstar dev trade. I want to see how good we can make Trent Taylor. Uh, it's now a project within a project. This has become about Jimmy Garoppolo. Now I want to see what I can do with Trent Taylor. Uh, we have, uh, ooh, Auden Tate's actually now the number one guy. So we have A.J. Brown, Auden Tate, 84. Still, I guess, no superstar wide receiver, but only after this year, I will have a guy, you know, superstar wide receiver, in my opinion, for stat-wise, 87 plus. They seem to be those guys that uh, really start to do well in the sim. Uh, Kittle has really stunted his growth, still at an 83. Offensive line's getting better. Christian's an 86. A uh, couple of the no-names here. Mimosa and Kyle are serviceable. Powers, 84. Trent Brown, 84. Hopefully, we cut down the sacks and we get it in, like, the 30s. You know, we've been in the 60s. We've been in the 50s, the 30s. Can we get that, please? And thank you. Uh, defensive front, still really, really good. Thomas is 87. Buckner, 94. Armstead, 83. Lynch, 84. Uh, we have Ward, who's up to an 87 overall superstar dev trait, which he spent most of his XP on uh, after winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, Marco Wilson will be starting as our first-round draft pick. Tart's an 88. Derwin James is an 88. We have Devondre Campbell, who's our only big fish we're able to land in free agency, but a big-time big fish, as he is now an 8-88 right outside linebacker. Uh, Foster's an 89. Eric Reed's still holding on here with an 82. Overall, this is a team. We've gone 6-10 and 10 the last two seasons. This is a team worse, absolute worse, 8-8. Eight eight. You know, I'm expecting wildcard, to be completely honest with you. But you never know. It's really, really tough to predict uh, how the Sim is going to treat your team. So let's get into it. Well, here's going to be in a very expensive free agency period. Ruben Foster, Solomon Thomas, Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, probably let to let Juszczyk go. Uh, Aaron Lynch, George Kittle, Trent Taylor. All these guys are big-time contributors for our team that we, that we have to resign. And we did spend a lot of money. Trying to bring in uh, Devondre Campbell. Luckily enough, the James Bradbury money that we were going to go all in on uh, will probably help us be able to retain one of these players, but we're not going to have very much in terms of a year five push. Right now, it's looking like we're going to have to go to a year five because we cannot get a good record, uh, but we got to bring back all these dudes. In year number four is hit another fail playoff push for your Niners team. God damn. 8-8. Eight eight. So, hey, runners up in the NFC West. It sounds better when you say that. 8-8 eight kind of where that was like the bottom that I wanted to hit. 
Um, but hey, the first time we did the Niners rebuild, it took us year five to do anything. Maybe that's the same case here. Like, we still have some coach XP we need to spend. Looking at Jimmy G, 40, almost 5,000 passing errors, 35 touchdowns, 13 picks. Still an asshole to sack. So sacks are way, 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 way too much. Uh, I'm very surprised that he's still able to put up the numbers he has by getting sacked that much. Running the ball, Hyde, 800 yards, 10 touchdowns. Okay, decent year. That's pretty much been the norm. Trent Taylor's a monster. Repeat from last offseason. 95 catches, almost 1,400 yards, 10 TDs with that superstar dev trait. Lord knows where that boy's at. 92 catches, 730 and 2 for A.J. Brown. 1,207 for Auden Tate. 604 from Kittle. 620 and 8 from Hyde. Hyde's a beast. Hyde is a dual threat monster right now. Who's blowing the, who's, who's, shoot, who's crap of the bed? Trent Brown, Gerald, oh, tackle play is not great. They're all like 87 and 85 overall. What is going on there? Ruben Foster led the team with 129 tackles, 126 for a rookie, or not rookie, sorry, free agency signing Devondre Campbell, 106 for Denzel Ward. We got 13 and a half sacks for Solomon Thomas. Of course, he's the only player we were unable to resign, but we're going to hit him with that franchise tag because we only have one year left. Uh, nine and a half sacks, Aaron Lynch, eight and a half, Armstead, six for Mr. Buckner. Uh, we got four, four sacks and five interceptions from Ruben Foster. Three from Eric Reed, three from Denzel Ward, and a couple picks here. One from Marco Wilson, one from Derwin James as well. Quickly looking at the yearly awards, the MVP went to the random QB for the Browns. Oh, how things have changed. Looks like Jacoby Brissett's a mercenary bouncing around from team to team, but consistently being an MVP candidate. Uh, Jimmy G coming at nine. Hey, that's, that's something, right? Offensive player of the year went to Jameis Winston. Jimmy Garoppolo coming in at number eight. Defensive player of the year went to Danny Trevathan. We got Ruben Foster coming in at number four. Offensive rookie of the year. Did we get anyone here? Hey, Cam Akers coming in at number eight. And for defensive rookie of the year, Marco Wilson finishing at that number three spot. All in all, though, still very disappointing that we have yet to make a playoff push. But, you know, now it's all or nothing. Super Bowl or bust time. Can we please get some decent play from our tackles, please? So it's free agency time. Uh, we saw the tag for Solomon Thomas, and I figured we could probably just bid on him. So that's what we did. We're going for the big three. Sean Harlow, I have no idea. Does he, I think he's Falcons, maybe. Somehow he's in 88, and superstar dev trait. So I figured, why not? We have the cash. We can find a spot to put him on this offensive line. More so, probably at the right guard spot. Solomon Thomas, again, we're bidding. We're way out bidding the Giants. Can't see him not coming back. And then Dalvin Cook. From the running back spot. I know we got Cam Akers, but he's still stuck at a 79. Hyde has regressed, even though he's been unbelievable. Dalvin Cook's a 98. There's no way we're not pulling the trigger, especially when the only other offers were bad offers from the Raiders and Colts. So we're going all in. We're spending all of our big dad bucks as we get ready for the year five. I don't know how many of these guys we're going to sign. Um, we, we overpaid for all of them. So if we don't get all of them, there, you know there's some shenanigans going on. Let's see live time. What happens? Do we get all three of these players or not? We got all of them, finally. There we go. Three big splashes as it's Super Bowl or bus time. There's no point of going to the grave with money in your pocket, money in your wallet. You know that saying. So here we go. Big three signings. All right, here's a quick look at our final draft. And literally, we just went for what positions we needed filling on the depth chart after we, you know, invested all of our money in free agency. So we, st and we still had a tremendous draft class. So this is a really good draft um, and a really good rebuild for drafts. On the first round, we get an 81 overall linebacker here, normal dev trade again. We have yet to get an 80 plus superstar, but I still will take that as it's just some depth behind Eric Reed. Uh, second round, we got, you know, solid tight end, good depth tight end, 72 center. We get one of those juicy 80 fullbacks late, you know, kind of filling in for Kyle Juszczyk, which is good move. And then just, uh, didn't even scout him. We needed depth at safety. We only had one safety in the roster. We're, still, we're able to get Rashad Douglas from Penn State, 76 with a quick, one of those shot in the darks that finally pans out. We had a couple bad picks. Like I said, we're just more so shooting at the wind to fill in our depth chart, but still had a pretty respectful draft. But now it's Super Bowl or bust time. Let's see if these big free agency signings can help us get over the edge. Get over that hump. All right, here we go. Super Bowl or bust time. Um, yeah. Don't know how well this is all going to work out, but... Um, we got playmakers, so offensive line, our tackle spots, we have uh, Christian's an A-, minus. Trent Brown is uh, probably our biggest weakness on the entirety of the team. Uh, we got Harlow now an 88 overall left guard, A-, minus. offensive line, that's a good enough offensive line to get into the playoffs. Kittle actually got a one point bump, now up to an 84. Uh, we got Taylor in the slot, still 87, Brown and take two big bodied wide receivers built pretty much like the, the Carolina Panthers. We now have 98 overall Dalvin Cook, Garoppolo has not developed very well at all, even though his stats have been pretty solid. Hasn't really, you know, 85. It's, is that good enough really to, to win this? 
Um, look at the defense here. Defensive front, really, really solid. Thomas is an 88. Buckner, 94. A couple 83s, 84s. No one below a B. We got Denzel Ward's up to a 93 overall, which is insane. Marco Wilson's an 82 in his second season. Safety play, Tarts an 87. Derwin James is an 89. We get Devondre Campbell, 89. Foster's a 91. And Carrington, our first round draft pick, is actually taking over for Eric Reed at that left outside linebacker spot. So, Bet, this is a this is a good team. This is a not the best team we've seen. This is more so. Is this you know, almost an experiment? Can Jimmy Garoppolo get the job done? And this is it, man. This is as good as a team you probably could put together around Jimmy Garoppolo without trading for uh, Khalil Mack and Julio Jones every single time. So let's see, man. That's the pedal to the metal. And at the end of year number five, there we go. Kyle, this is Kyle Shanahan coach of the year. Then little news story. Yeah, lots of lots of greens. Lots of greenies there. 14 and 2. It makes no sense. It never makes any sense. This is like we have two th what we have three new players and we're drastically like that much better. I mean, look at the regular season. Look at this. 7 8. We didn't lose our first game till week 12 and we're putting 40 50 points on guys. I mean, I guess I guess the only thing you could surmise is you need that 190 plus player on your offense at a skill position. Be it a wide receiver, be it Dalvin Cook, I think is the guy right now. Um, offensive line, like I said, our offensive line just got marginally better. I don't know, man. The, the sim is really, really tough to predict. Um, but let's look at the stats, see how our players did. So Jimmy Garoppolo had 5,400 passing yards, 43 touchdowns, 19 picks. Maybe we got ourselves an MVP here. So Garoppolo, Jimmy G. I mean, his stats have been pretty good. He hasn't developed very well. He's still only at like that 85 range, but those are really good numbers. Uh, running the ball, we got 1,200, 1,300 yards, 23 touchdowns from Dalvin Cook. Mother of God. That guy's a monster. Uh, receiving, we got 121 catches, 1,700 yards, 12 touchdowns for Trent Taylor. We got 1,100 yards, 11 TDs, A.J. Brown. Tate and Kittle had decent years. Kittle finally had his breakout year. Only took him five years. Dalvin Cook had 500 yards and four touchdowns. So Dalvin Cook finished the year with about 1,800 yards and almost 30 touchdowns. Well, that's not almost 30, but... 27 touchdowns that's a bad man the sacks still not great definitely not great uh, as far as defense 130 tackles for Ruben Foster 107 for Marco Wilson 104 for Devondre Campbell and 101 for Mr. Derwin James on the sacks front 10 for Aaron Lynch 7 half Solomon Thomas again proving the fact that guys in contract years play a lot better than they do every other year uh, 7 half Eric Armstead 7 for Mr. Buckner and on the interceptions front 10 picks from Denzel Ward that might be the most interceptions we've seen, or maybe tied for the most in any rebuild. Always like to see it when it's a prospect that we've drafted. Jalen Mills got six, five for Foster, four for Marco Wilson, two and two. So, you know, I guess our team just put it together for the final year. For the MVP, of course we wouldn't win. We've only won one MVP, and I think that's when we straight up bought Russell Wilson once for one year. So I don't know what it's going to take for us to actually win the MVP. Let's see quickly, just because just it's a pet peeve, what did... Garoppolo, okay, 54 and 43. What did the Saints guy have? How? You got sack less? What's his rushing? That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. That the number one. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, so, okay, Jimmy Garoppolo got absolutely robbed for the MVP award. That's good to see. Uh, Dalvin Cook coming at number six. Quickly, for the NFC Offensive Player of the Year, I guess we didn't couldn't even win that either. Garoppolo coming at number two. Dalvin Cook at number five for defensive play of the year. Ruben Foster got it. Uh, we also had uh, Denzel Ward making the short list. Offensive rookie. Uh, we didn't even draft anyone, really. All right. Um, confusing. Very much a confusing season. But it looks like we're well on our way for our final playoff push following the, the map work of the very first 49 rebuild where we basically we did nothing until the fifth and final year. We won the Super Bowl. So we now know what we're going up against. And in our first playoff, we're taking the 11-5 Rams to town. How I'm going to be doing this, like I said, slightly modified because you guys still want to see some gameplay uh, if we get to the Super Bowl. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to play the moments, and then if we make the Super Bowl, I'll be taking over offense. We'll see what this team can do. But we have to get there first. All right, here we go in our opening divisional round matchup against the Rams. Um, I feel confident because we have Dalvin Cook, and the play the moment sim really relies on the run game more than it does the big pass. Uh, so we'll see what we can do. It looks like we're going to get bodied. Okay. Okay, getting bodied so far. But hey, let's get a touchdown here. Make it a one touchdown game. Hold to a field goal. No, of course we'll get a touchdown. Cool. Get a TD. 17-24. Right. No, I'm impressed. 24-24. There we go. Big second half here. 
31-24 touchdown lead as we get ready to enter the fourth. It's all tied up. We're moving down the field. Hopefully we're relying on uh, old Dalvin Cook. We settle for a field goal. They go down and get a touchdown automatically. We had to punt it. It's looking like first team to punt. Loses, and there we go. Hey, that's fun. Building up that team, going losing first first game, losing to Jared Goff. Three touchdowns. Garoppolo, 248, two touchdowns, one interception. I kind of really wanted to play with this team. But, uh, I mean, oh my God. I mean, yeah, running backs did well. Receiving. Watkins had himself a day. Gurley had himself. Oh, my God. I, mean, I don't know. It, it's it's the point where the Sim's so fluky this year, man. You, you can't even really get upset about it because, I mean, I don't want to. I understand that, you know, if I really want to try to do it. I think we will because we're on a little bit of losing streak. The next rebuild. I'm just straight up, once we make the playoffs, especially if we get a year five scenario, I'm just going to actually, like, play the game a little bit. And I'll chop up the highlights. But, I, I mean, I, the more... I get more complaints of me controlling the team and winning the Super Bowl than I do for people saying there's no gameplay. Um, but, I mean, i got to modify this somehow, some way. So, you know what I'm going to do right now? This is the last rebuild you guys see in this. It is the, you know, obviously it's convenient that it's at the end. Um, I'm going to, if we don't make the playoffs in any year and we get to a year five, I'm playing every single game in the playoffs. I think that's fair for a five-year sim. So I, I mean, I want to play with these teams. So I, I think that's a good common ground. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, I think that's what's going to be best. So, yeah. If we make the playoffs in the first four years, we'll go the format of just play the moments. Let's see what the team we built can do in, the, in like, the mind of the sim. And then in year five, if you know, even if we've made the playoffs before, year five playoffs will always be gameplay. I think that's a good common ground. If you guys agree or disagree with that, let me know. But there you go, that was the rebuild with Jimmy Garoppolo as a leader in the face of the San Francisco 49ers. Not a whole lot of success, his numbers were pretty good, that's what we're able to find out, but all in all, not too spectacular. The team he built was pretty good, we saw a couple monsters, Ruben Foster, Denzel Ward, Derwin James, Trent Taylor becoming a damn cult legend on the channel, that's good to see. Uh, but yeah, that, that does it here for today, guys. If always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Give me some feedback in the comment section below. And until next time, uh, it's C4 saying tune in for another Rebuild Roulette on Tuesday. Next Rebuild will be um, the Bills for a realistic Rebuild next Friday. Rebuild crazy because those are the only videos for some reason uh, that you guys want to watch. I have no problem doing it, though, because they are fun. But uh, that does it for me today, guys. Next time at C4, saying peace out.